Hello, Gold Derby fans. While she plays Dolores, a robot on a mission in HBO's Westworld, I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and with me is Evan Rachel Wood. Thank you so much for joining me, Evan. Um, you know, as a fan of the first two seasons, I have to admit I was a little nervous when I saw the trailer for season three, and I was like, oh, God, we're out of the parks, and we're in the real world. Am I ready to leave the parks behind? So uh, I'm wondering, like, did you have, like, similar hesitations about that, and what was kind of the biggest change in terms of opening up the world in that way? Um, I think one of the fun, unique things about the show is that it's always reinventing itself. Um, I know it's sort of the vision of the creators to um, wipe the slate clean every season in a way, um, throw away the sets and, and start over with a, a new set of rules. Um, but I think we all were always under the impression that we would eventually be leaving the park. I know we were all kind of eager to see the world outside of the park um, to get a better idea of where we were and what we were dealing with. Um, but of course it's, it's daunting because, you know, we loved the park, we love the, the Western element of the show. Um, but I think what's so cool about it is the dichotomy of both. It's the, you know, um, sort of the the old way and and the old west and now it's sort of the new way and and this new version of the wild west um this this digital version of the wild west um which we're experiencing sort of in a way now um it's just very heightened <laughs> in <laughs> this world um but i was excited um to sort of see who she was this season to see who she was in a modern world and to see Dolores slightly out of control, because she season two, she was on a mission. She was very um, eye on the prize. Um, nothing could really get in her way. But, you know, now she's um, she's a new territory. Um, it, everything is unfamiliar. She's learning and growing with every experience. But again, she's still a thousand steps ahead of everybody else. So seeing how that all played out, I was I was excited for. Yeah. And the creators, Jonathan Nolan, Lisa Joy, um, just create this very sprawling narrative um, with with really grand and, and complex themes. So, what what do they talk to you about when they like? Do they sit you down at, at the beginning and sort of explain the world to you as you enter the season? They do, um, and they have such a poetic sensibility to everything that they do, and everything is really there for a reason. Um, you know, even the idea of uh, these two main characters, Maeve and Dolores, sort of being pitted against each other in season three. The idea behind that being corrupt systems take the good people uh, that are slaves to those systems and turn them against each other. Um, and that is how corrupt systems stay in control. So, you know, the metaphor of the two of them fighting, um, I thought was was quite beautiful and really poignant to where we are now. Um, and this idea that we're not in control of our destinies, we talked about a lot. Um, really delving into, you know, obviously consciousness is always one of the main themes of, of the show. But um, I think this season was really about destiny and uh, whether or not we are truly in control of it or not, whether or not we really are free. And also this idea of a revolution. And I think so many people are torn when they watch Dolores as a character, um, mainly because she's doing what needs to be done to be free, but that's not always beautiful. It's not always heroic. It's not always wrapped up in a pretty bow. It's messy. It's hard. It's violent. It's scary. Change is frightening. Um, and um, so I think she embodies all of these things where her, her goal and her motivation behind it is actually quite noble. She's fighting for an entire race um, of beings uh, that will be wiped out if she doesn't do something, while at the same time having to sort of um, be at the head of this, this violent revolution. Um, so again, exploring the fact that there really are no heroes or villains in Westworld. Um, and I think that confuses people sometimes. <laughs> and feel all kinds of things, uh, especially this season, I think. Yeah, you sometimes think, I'm going to root for her, or should I be fearing her? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. 
and her sort of master plan uh, as it goes on is really kind of teased out in the show. For you as an actor, do they let you in on any parts of the plan beforehand so you know uh, going in, or do you find out week to week? I, I, I find out episode to episode. I have a general idea, um, but we really don't know um, the big surprises. Uh, we, we find out sort of in the same way that the audience finds out, um, which makes the show kind of twice as hard to work on. You know, normally you're given your arc and you're able to sort of craft something and, and piece something together and see where you're going and plot it out. And in this, you really just have to live in the moment and surrender to <laughs> the creators, <laughs> which <laughs> sounds like I'm a host. Um, but, um, but it is kind of like that. You just have to, um, you know, have faith in, in the showrunners, which we do. Um, because we know, you know, they're never going to lead us down a path that um, isn't going to make sense later. Uh, and it's sort of, I don't know, it keeps it fun, it keeps it interesting, it keeps it fresh, it keeps you on your toes. But it is very difficult. It's very difficult to sort of step off the ledge and free fall when you don't really know where you're going. And you have to really um, believe in your choices and and hope for the best. Um, so it is, it's, it's scary at times. It's scary to, to work on the show as an actor, but luckily everybody's in the same boat. So we're there to catch each other. <laughs> it's um, one of those big surprises this season was the identity of who's in the pearls. And I kept, I kept theorizing all these things about who's in the pearls. And I was, of course, wrong and was hitting myself. We're to lead you down a path. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just right there. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the kind of cool things about everyone being a Dolores who had those pearls is you didn't really have a lot of scenes with Tessa Thompson beforehand. Um, and this season you get like this really beautiful tender moment and it's kind of refreshing to see these two characters who maybe haven't been tender in a while uh, get that intimate moment together. What was it like shooting that with her? I was really excited uh, when I found out they, they did tell me who the pearls were because, and they told Tessa, they didn't tell anybody else, not even the crew, because we needed to know when we interacted with one another in those scenes, you know, how we were responding to each other. Um, and again, I just thought it was incredibly poetic that she's holding herself, that she's giving herself pep talks, that she's telling herself, I know how smart you are. I know how capable you are. I know that you can do this. Um, uh, so these scenes were so intimate. Um, and I think, you know, I, people's initial reaction was, oh, this, this, this must be a love interest, but it was herself. Um, and it was her being intimate with herself. And, and I think, um, again, the hosts, their bodies are not really who they are. It's, it's, it's their pearls, it's their code. Um, so these are just kind of shells, husks. Um, so even when they're taking their clothes off or, do, you know, it's just like there's nothing sexual about it. There's nothing weird about it. It's 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 like just a frame for them. Um, and so I think that was another thing that really threw off the, the audience. Um, but that's what's so amazing about the show is you kind of have to shed your programming and think outside the box a bit. Um, but I love that she was able to have that moment because Dolores can be very stern and very um, hard to read. You know, she's poker face because she has to be. Um, but Hale, we call her Haloris, um, is one of the only people that she can really let her guard down with. And so I think you see a much more relaxed, yes, much, much more tender Dolores. Um, but at the same time, there's also this weird power dynamic. Even though it's herself, there's still a hierarchy Mm -hmm. with the Dolori, um, and she's kind of at the top. And so again, we're exploring power and pathways and um, power imbalances and um, are our choices really our own? And even though these are parts of Dolores, they all deviate from the same path because they're different parts of herself. Um, so I don't know, I thought it was a really fascinating thing to, to explore and I loved, I, I was doing the same thing. I, I thought she was gonna take a bunch of, you know, <laughs> Uh, ninjas or <laughs> um, and of course of course if, you know if you want something done right do it yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
another uh, new addition this season was Aaron Paul to the show. And you, you and him have just such amazing chemistry to watch. Um, and you have, uh, I would say, the bulk of your scenes are, at, are with him. So did that, did that chemistry come on instantly? And what was it like suddenly getting this new scene partner three seasons in? Um, I was excited. I mean, I've been such a fan of Aaron's work, obviously. We all know how talented he is. Um, and I could sort of tell by watching him that we had similar acting styles. And, 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 and I was right. We both have a very similar work ethic um, in how we approach characters and how we, we like to have fun on set and keep things light and keep the energy up, keep people's spirits up. It's a really, really hard show to work on. The hours are absolutely brutal. Um, the time frame in which we have to do everything is, is very small. So we really, really push ourselves to the limit. Um, so he was a wonderful addition to have where, um, you know, he's just one of those people that, that lifts everybody up and, uh, while turning in these sort of insane performances and he's able to turn it on and off really quick, which I think is a necessity on this show. You have to be able to turn it on at a moment's notice. Um, but he was wonderful and I, and I loved their dynamic and I, and I loved that, you know, once again, Westworld sort of steers clear of stereotypes. It's like, you always think they're going to go one way and then they, they go a different one. So I think everybody was kind of shipping us at the beginning of the season, but really it's a more maternal relationship. It's kind of a Sarah Connor, <laughs> John, <laughs> um, uh, dynamic, um, where she sees something in him that, that he's unaware of and and I think she needs to protect him at all costs you know we never really know Dolores's full plan um but I did love that uh people kind of had the wrong idea about her um and I think we do that to survivors a lot we pass a lot of judgment onto them and we can be put off by them and attack them um but if you really look underneath you know, the reasoning as to why they, they, they do the things to do or why they fight as hard as they fight, it makes sense. But it, it, it does baffle me sometimes. I still I still hear people going, well, why does Dolores not like the man in black? Why is she doing all of this? <laughs> you forget that she had 30 years of torture and she's not free. And, and if you were her, you would do the same. Um, and I think, um, so yeah, sorry that. I deviated this this question was about Aaron. <laughs> um, but yes, he was absolutely wonderful. And I cannot wait to see where his character goes next season now that we sort of have seen the center of his maze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the highlights for me too that you got to do together was that huge car chase in the genre <laughs> yeah. scene. Um, you get a lot of action set pieces on this show. Do you enjoy doing the stunt work? I, I do. I really do. And we have such an amazing, we have amazing stunt coordinators um, that have been with us, you know, since, since the beginning. Um, so we really trust them. And um, because of everything we're doing, you know, there's a lot of guns, there's a lot of stunts, there's a lot of animals. Um, you have to be incredibly careful. And I've never felt, you know, in danger on the set, knock on wood. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, but I do enjoy doing the stunts. I think Aaron does too. I mean, Aaron was really dangling off the side of that construction site, which was just terrifying. Um, and uh, I am a black belt in Taekwondo, so I was really excited to start fighting. Um, you know, those fight scenes with Luke Hemsworth and Tandy Newton. Um, I think she enjoyed it too. Tandy and I are such good friends that it was hard not to laugh sometimes <laughs> it's just it's just so far from who we are um but she was absolutely wonderful to to choreograph with and and to figure out the dynamic of those scenes and to fight while acting at the same time because they're not just fight scenes i mean they're incredibly loaded um and the wonderful moments that tanny and i got to share where we lock eyes or when you know we we get to have dialogue in between pummeling each other. Um, it was actually really powerful. It was, it was really emotional. Um, but I do enjoy it. I really do enjoy the yeah. act of, you know, the first few times. And then after you've done it, you know, 10, 20 times, you're a little, you're, you're a little tired, but. 
I think with with Tandy's character, Maeve, like fans have been waiting because you've had scenes together, but people have been like, oh, I really want them to team up, and that's not quite happening. Um, they're pitted oh. against each other, but at, at yeah. least we get this like battle of the century. Um, yeah. But but you're right. What's underneath it, and and the actual dialogue and emotion under it is so powerful. Um, what is did that go in a satisfying way for you when you? Did you have those similar things of like, I hope to, I get to work with Maeve? We were, Tani and I were always talking about, oh, I can't wait till we get to team up because we just figured that's, that's what's gonna happen. And then of course we, we get the material for season three and realize, oh, of course, of course, the system has to pit us against each other first because that's what happens. Um, obviously neither of them really wants to be fighting one another. Um, they both have a different just cause. Uh, but uh, but it was uh, it was satisfying, and I think you know there's still more. We've got one episode left, and you know I think we'll see even more um, of their dynamic unfold, which I'm really excited about, and which was incredibly emotional to film. And Tandy's such a wonderful scene partner. I can't say enough good things about her. Um, all the actors on the show are just so incredibly giving and so present when you work with them, um, and it's hard not to just fall into it. Um, but I am excited for more. Yeah, I hope there's more. <laughs> we all do. Um, and, you know, you've been nominated at the Emmys twice for this role um, in the lead category, which is a which is quite a feat for an ensemble show to be um, to make it into the lead categories. That's amazing. So what does that continued recognition mean to you? It means a lot. Um, this role has meant so much to me. Uh, we've been doing the show for five years now. Um, again, like I said, everyone really pours everything that they have into this. It's, you know, ask anybody, any department that works on a show, they'll tell you it's probably the hardest thing that they've ever worked on. Um, so that recognition and the recognition for, for you know, the rest of the cast and the crew, I think, is, is incredible. Um, and it's well-deserved. Um, and it's special for me because I just, I love this character. I love everything about her. Sometimes I love to hate her. <laughs> you know, I love, I love all the different elements. I love that she's not one, certainly not one dimensional. And there seems to be infinite possibilities for her. She's fiercely intelligent. She's very strong, which is incredibly vulnerable. She's versatile. She's, um, she's everything um, all at once. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see where she goes from here and I'm just every day so grateful that I've been able to embody her and bring her to life and, and, and play her. I think she'll be, you know, kind of one of the crown jewels of my, of my career for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and before I had to let you go, I, you know, you were just renewed for season four. Um, <laughs> so congratulations. And, uh, and do you have any sort of wish list, like hopes and dreams for, where Dolores could go next in a season four? We can um, pitch Jonathan and Lisa now. You know, I mean, I, I love, I mean, I love Dolores now. I love all the different iterations of her, um, even if they're difficult at times. Um, but I, I would love to see um, her original, the, the original Dolores again, her original mm -hmm. model, make and model. Um, because I think that's her core code. I think that's who she really is. Um, I know she was merged with Wyatt sort of against her will. And so I would love to see her being able to choose who she is and, and, and what she wants to be and um, see that sweet side of her again. Um, I think she's had to bury it for so long to get her mission completed. Um, so, you know, one day it would be it would be mm -hmm. nice the season one Dolores, the one that we originally kind of fell in love with. I miss her sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll we'll hope for her return when it when it comes back in season four. Maybe. I mean, that happened eventually, <laughs> right? I yeah. don't know. Just I this is a theory, but I was your know. fingers for a happy ending. Yes. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Evan. Everyone who's watching at home, please subscribe to Gold Derby. Make sure you keep up to date with us during Emmy season. And thank you again. Wonderful talking thank with you. you. Appreciate it.